Hi guys, welcome to MetalNet. I'm very excited today to have Jerry Zahir from Carmeria. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So I'm going to just start by saying that although I know that your band's been around for quite a while now, I want to say eight years. Is that right? Yeah, seven or eight years. Seven or eight years. Um, yeah. I only discovered you recently it was this summer actually a friend who um sends me you know we share kind of metal videos and we'll send this and that um to each other sent this video of this band that i i hadn't heard of called carmaria i saw this beautiful video it was for i want to say it was celestia and it was just this beautiful video totally caught my attention loved the music loved the look just loved the full buy-in of the band um, and so you guys are totally new to me. So I'm going to just sort of approach this conversation as like a new excited fan who just wants to know everything. Sure. <laughs> all right. So first of all, um, you guys have been around for a little bit. W what was kind of the beginning of your band and have you always had this sort of symph symphonic metal sound? Sure. Um, so started with, uh, as how, well, as most bands start out, friends in high school that kind of just left high school wanting to do music um that just developed from you know doing covers to slowly writing originals uh band members leaving until we eventually two two to three years later formed the first incarnation of come area and we had a female singer at the time um and we were marketing ourselves more melodic rock at the time so we had a I'd like to say that collectively we had a few more melodic and progressive rock influences. And at the time, our singer, Sarah, also named Sarah, mm -hmm. um, really wasn't into a lot of heavy metal. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot, lot wasn't particularly into say the darker metal that I was into that I really wanted to take the band in. So it was actually a beautiful compromise. We ended up forming this nice, I would, dare, I would dare say there were some aspects of symphonic rock in there. So we were still heavily influenced by Nightwish and all that back then, but um, definitely wasn't as darker as we're taking our image and sound now. So that's how that started. And I guess where we ended up today, just um, unfortunately as how, some bands, as how some bands go, band members come and go. So then I guess I was, uh, the silver lining of that was I had the opportunity to reform in a, to, to a new sound that I really wanted, hence what you discovered, if that makes sense. So between that, that early incarnation of the band and now, how many of the members are the same of Carmaria? Nah, just me. You're, yeah. the, you're the one. You're, yeah. the, you're the, okay, God, that's cool. I'm the sole and survivor. Were, so, and you were a founding member, right? So yes. you're, you're yes. the string that brings us through. So yeah, so it gave you an opportunity to definitely be lean more metal and that sort of thing, um, which mm -hmm. is, I think is, I listened to some of your early stuff and I thought it was beautiful, but this stuff that you're doing now is what really kind of like pulled me in because I am mm -hmm. definitely, um, I d I'm a proud metal head and I listen to all different kinds of metal. Um, but the symphonic category is like relatively new to me. And I say relative because I know it's been around for a while, but I've also been listening to metal for over 30 years. So to me, it's still, I still think of it as like the newer sound. Can you, for, for people like myself who are, who've been listening forever and have listened to different things that fall under the metal umbrella, can you tell me what symphonic metal means to you when you, when you say that your band is defined that way? Sure. I'd like to think of it as a love child between, say, Metallica and Hans Zimmer. Okay. Yeah. So when people ask me what my band sounds like, because um, a lot of the time when I meet new people or even when, say, younger people ask me, um, what genre is your band? And I say symphonic metal. I always get the, that's interesting, because I, I always get a lot of people that are a bit confused by that description. And then some of my go-tos are either, it's Evanescence with a male singer, because... Mm -hmm. No, uh, you know, maybe nine times out of 10, at least people know who Evanescence are. So at least I can say, hey, it's kind of like Evanescence with, um, yeah, Evanescence with a male singer. Or I like to just say um, heavy metal with an orchestra behind it. And usually that usually um, gets people, but then they get confused and they'll say, wait, so you play with an orchestra? <laughs> <laughs> right. right. <laughs> and I'm like, I wish, not yet. <laughs> so, and yeah. Oh, and so that would be, that would be like a goal for you is to do like, a tour or an album with a full, full or oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I remember, um, I wouldn't I remember in like teenage years seeing, um, the first band I saw tour with an orchestra was, uh, I didn't see this live, but more so just watching a DVD. Um, one of deep purples. 
mm-hmm. uh, DVDs where they played with an orchestra. And I, I just saw that I was like, I need to do that one day. And then obviously um, seeing, well, you know, seeing bands like Art, uh, hearing bands like Nightwish do that sound. And more and more bands have been releasing DVDs doing that. Like I know Metallica did one and that's some um, iconic. I know Dream Theatre have released one with an orchestra and um, one, uh, Dimu Borgi. Mm-hmm. did a did a dvd with an orchestra so it's definitely on my um before i die bucket list That's on your like definitely. post-covid um <laughs> oh, hell yeah. list of things to do <laughs> <laughs> One um, day. so let's then since you are sort of you are a founding member that's still in the band let's talk about your personal influences and then we'll go back to like who's in the band now and like what what we can look forward to um what was your start when did you when did you get into music like before metal symphonic metal and all of that when did you first discover music how old were you and what were you listening to sure um probably first discovered music when i was like maybe two or three um my dad's a big music lover he used to crank um like deep purple black sabbath but in particular the rolling stones i remember as as young as i can remember watching it was uh, the bridges bridges to babylon tour and my dad had it taped on VHS and I lost count of how many times I would request to watch this VHS on repeat. And I used to just watch, well, back then my idol was Mick Jagger. Cause I used to watch this man, like run up and down the stage and just perform. Like I want to do that one day. So um, yeah, definitely just watching the Rolling Stones got me into music and always used to request like, you know, uh, listening to them when I was growing up with my dad. So yeah. So my dad is a big um, influence on my life there. Uh, playing an instrument. I was just lucky that a guitar teacher offered his services at my primary school when I was seven, six or seven. So took them up and I've been playing ever since. Were you the kid that was really like so into it that you established a practicing habits right away? Were you like that obsessive kid? Um, <laughs> I'd be no, I'd be lying if I said yes. Um, <laughs> I definitely stuck through it because I remember I started cl- I started the lessons. It was after school with maybe maybe like five, six other people in my um in my primary school, but then slowly they each just dropped off because they just you know weren't into it until it was just me and one other kid, mm-hmm. and then that's when my guitar teacher kind of um, still tutored us privately in his home or in, a, in one of his friend's homes rather then eventually that last kid dropped off. So then it was just me. And then I um, just, yeah, stuck through it. Definitely would say that I didn't take my practicing and playing seriously until high school. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was lucky enough to go to a um, performing arts high school. So naturally um, because I auditioned with the performing art it was a bit of a requirement to keep up you know, whatever my, whatever your craft was, whatever your, you know, whatever you majored in. Um, so yeah, definitely, different, definitely didn't take my playing seriously until high school. And that was actually the same time I changed guitar teachers. So my first teacher moved on to uh, teach in high school, I believe. So that's when I met a new guy that he recommended. And the second guitar teacher was more into metal. So that was also my shift of, oh, okay. So I could actually play guitar like this because I was always growing up with the Stones Okay. and playing that kind of stuff. And then I shifted to more, um, more of the stuff I like playing now. It's more the power metal, prog metal, stuff like that. And did you, so was it the influence of the guitar teacher? Like you had this person who was into that, who introduced you to it, or was something happening in the world of metal where you connected to that as well? Sure. I would say my biggest influence was definitely my teacher because he was exposing me to bands like um, the band, like some of my favorites, like Evergrey, Stradivarius, uh, dream theater a little bit of dimu so he definitely was the catalyst that got me into metal but i guess at the same time being an angsty teenager and going through my um emo phase and hanging out with like you know high school kids that are all um going through our teenage phases all, all discovering bands like well that's when i went through that's when i went through my punk phase as well so listening to like green day uh, my chemical romance getting into all that so it was it was, a, it was a good time it was a good time i was like listening <laughs> listening to all my uh, favorite emo bands so like my chemical romance panic panic at the disco all that whilst trying to play like all this like european power metal so <laughs> so it was a it was a good mix so i think um that was just just my um teenage years just um discovering new bands 
it all kind of came together. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it all came, it all came together. And what was the metal like in Australia um, at that time? I wasn't really familiar with the scene a lot. I guess um, I knew my teacher was in a band and um, he's not, uh, he's not playing anymore. Um, his band broke up quite a while ago. Um, I didn't really know much about it because I guess all I was listening to was, you know, all the bigger bands overseas. And again, all the metal that say my teacher was, um, teaching me all the pieces that I was practicing with him. Yeah. They're all bands from overseas. So I guess I didn't really get exposed to the Australian metal scene um, until after leaving school until I was like, Oh, hang on. What's it like to create a band in Australia and kind of taking it from there. So um, yeah, I guess I was very ignorant about our scene in particular until um, leaving high school. If that yeah. makes sense. Was, and I wonder, was it because it was sort of post that time when, when metal was big enough that you would have just known, oh, there's a bunch of local bands playing metal? Was it because it was a smaller scene that you had to go find it? Uh, well, hard to say. I wouldn't really... I feel like I have to be careful with, with, with what I say here because I feel like... Um, I feel like the scene's a lot bigger than what I'm aware of. And I think... I've def I've definitely seen it decline. I've definitely see the I've definitely seen the Australian metal scene decline, and I'm only saying that based off conversations I've had with uh, older musicians and uh, old, yeah older musicians and older mentors I have in the scene. They've always told me about um, other bands that used to be in the scene. There used to be so many more, mm -hmm. so many more venues we could play at. So yeah, I definitely have seen a decline. Definitely not as big as it used to be. And I'm just going off um, stories that I've heard from older people that I've been lucky enough to either share a stage with or that have helped me in my musical journey, if that makes sense. Yep. No, it most definitely mm. does. I mean, I think we I think we're feeling that everywhere, or at least mm. certainly here. Um, I mean, when I was growing up, there were tons of clubs that you could go to, go to see really any kind of music, but I always leaned like rock or metal. So that's what I knew. And it's like, there's just less and less venues. Although I feel like there's smaller little venues popping up here and there. Um, and for the bands that I kind of came up with, that are from like 30, 35 years ago, I do feel like they were coming, they were starting to feel like they were coming through somewhat regularly because of these smaller venues. So I don't know, but I think that that mm. might be the case everywhere. And it'll be interesting to see what happens after COVID with so many places closing. I don't know if that's the same thing in Australia, but here every day there's like another new like restaurant or something is closing mm. and it's, it's really, it's heartbreaking. Yeah. Same thing here with, um, I've seen, I, uh, I guess I try not to keep up with updates because honestly, it just makes me a bit upset. But from what I do see on my face, or usually, usually it's on my Facebook news feed or say um, emails I get of um, newsletters I'm subscribed to for some um, music blogs and stuff like that. Yeah, I definitely have, some, have seen some venues close, bands fall apart as well. Bands I've just decided to just stop continuing because it's not financially viable right now. It's, it definitely sucks. Yeah. Definitely um, sucks. So I I happen to know just because I chatted with you briefly that we do have a lot to look forward to with Carmeria and that you guys do have music that's going to, that, well, I mean, you released a few things. So we had that beautiful video from you um, and you have a couple of other videos out there. And I think one is a more recent one. And I think one is with your former singer, but they're all beautiful. And I de would definitely encourage everybody. If they haven't seen them to go see them. Um, but there's new music coming from you. So tell us, about that what do we have to look forward to and when is the next album coming out sure um just one correction like the older videos have older band members but still the same singer we've been lucky enough to have jordan for the entirety oh, of the okay video. okay yeah yeah um yeah we were we, we we didn't get to um recording music videos when we had sarah oh okay um, <laughs> in the band that's okay um new music yeah so our album is done we're in the at the moment we've um gotten our gotten our first draft of our mixes back so we're just in the little uh we're just in the negotiation phase with our producer for final touches on the final mixes um it's looking to be without saying too much because a lot of this isn't actually uh public knowledge yet mm -hmm. uh it's looking to be released definitely 2021 only because uh just again just due to covid throwing out our whole schedule it's just going to make more sense 
again, this is COVID pending that we'll release the album 2021 to then gig, hopefully. So although it's, um, it could be ready by the end of the year, definitely got to hold off till early next year. Um, trying to, well, we're going to be building up our merch store in the meantime. So re- release a lot more merchandise and go from there. So should have new music um, on the way, but looking closer to early next year. Again, just because COVID threw out our plan. Yeah. yeah. Um, and in the meantime, are you as a band able to, um, are, you, are you sort of writing like the next, next album or what are you guys doing during this time? Sure. Um, yes, to answer that. Um, so I have um, either Mishka or, well, late, late, lately it's been Mishka coming over, has been helping me songwrite um, every Wednesday before our uh, regular Twitch streams, which I know you've been um, watching. So that's the other thing. We have noticed a lot of other bands or artists, musicians getting into streaming, whether that be on Instagram or Twitch. So we've decided, we decided um, far out. I don't know how many months ago it was when we did our first Instagram stream. Definitely, definitely quite a few months ago now that we decided to start Instagram streaming. Didn't think it was actually going to be a hit. And then as of three weeks ago, three weeks ago, we moved to Twitch. So looking, looking, pardon me, looking to expand that um, just to gain new fans and just for, it's something different. It's, it, is, it is really fun interviewing different people on there. Working on new covers for some more visual content. So can, can confirm that Mishka and I recorded a cover, finished recording a cover, middle of last week not saying what it is that's what everyone has to keep their eyes out for um and yeah definitely have started writing um album number two everything's still in the early fetal (laughs) phases as we like to call them with you know stupid draft names and what have you but um yeah so to in short keeping us busy is our building up our twitch stream as that's still new um definitely songwriting album number two and um building up merchandise i suppose Sum it up. So for anybody who hasn't seen it yet, it's called Red Wine Wednesday. <laughs> and it give us the time. Uh, it's it's an Australia time. So if you're like yeah. me, you might want to get on a calculator and figure out when that is for you. But when is Red Wine Wednesday? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So we have our weekly show called Red Wine Wednesdays every Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. It used to be strictly an hour because Instagram, you can only go live for an hour. But uh, Twitch doesn't have time restraints thank goodness so um we we say an hour now but the last few shows we've been really vibing so definitely not putting a time limit on each show this time yeah Mm. they've been really fun i think i've been to like maybe three or so of them and i was bummed when you first moved from instagram because instagram's easy for me because i'm just on it all the time and i'm like oh i can i can catch it and for me it's seven o'clock in the morning so i'm kind of getting ready for work and that sort of thing but it is still wednesday so it's nice still red wine Wednesday because sometimes there's that thing where you're on a different day from us but I have to say I really like the twitch it just felt really good and it was my first time really participating on twitch because the only other person I subscribe to is um Christina from Lacuna Coil she's the only other person I like ever go to see on twitch so that's a very new um is that new for you guys too to be on there hell yeah (laughs) yeah I definitely had to spend like a um a couple of days well a couple of days would be um an understatement if I had to spend a few days just watching other people before I started um, streaming myself and um, yeah, just trying to get inspiration. But then at the same time, I'm looking at all these like professional Twitch streamers and getting overwhelmed at their setup. So I'm like, Oh, how do I make mine look like that? But (laughs) no, it looked really good. And I don't know why it just, it just worked. I think even, I I feel like on Twitch, are you side by side or no one, you had like one person imposed, in the other person's window as opposed to Instagram where you're right on top. And the hard thing with Instagram is it's like you're reading all the stuff over one person's face, which I find a little bit frustrating. Yeah. Um, I'd rather like, even if one person's smaller, I'd rather see them. So it's been really fun to, to join you. And it's a nice little Mm. way to start my Wednesday. Oh, I'm glad. And the good thing about Twitch is that it saves. So then it's just stored in our channel. So if anyone doesn't actually tune in live, they can always just rewatch it again later. Oh, okay. So that, that would yeah. be another huge difference and advantage. Um, so, okay. So mm. we had uh, talked about the band a little, but I didn't have a chance to ask you 
who is in the band now if you could tell me who's in the band and what they play sure so um myself jerry zahir and thank you for saving uh, for saying my name right no one ever pronounces my name right so yeah jerry zahir i play lead um guitar we've got jordan von gray on vocals tori giamba on bass uh mishka bobrov on keys and we've got lachlan blackwood on drums okay and they've all they've all been in the band like for the the two or so years since you reformed mishka was the latest to join and okay. yeah two two years if i got that wrong he's gonna kill me but yeah i'm gonna say two years <laughs> that's right well, we'll we, i really like i like the um i like the gel that we have between us now so i almost forget you know how long we've been together it just feels like it's, we, I, this lineup really works i like that we all bounce ideas off each other so easily and the chemistry is great so um honestly does uh, it uh yeah i forget how long we've been together because it's just so natural now that's good and how like did you know all of these people had like from your personal life had you played with them before like where where did you find these find these uh band members that are in the yeah band? uh so this is a uh, bit of interesting stories here so jordan uh lisa and i knew uh, jordan was a mutual friend of lisa and i lisa was our uh, original keyboardist and she was around in first incarnation of Camaria back in 2012 2013 so you can see lisa in our two clips carpe noctem and solaris um so when we were looking for a singer when um, our first singer left, um, uh, Lisa was like, oh, I know a guy called Jordan. So we released a, we ended up releasing um, an instrumental version of an unreleased song and we dropped it online and that was our way of auditioning a singer. So we're like, if anyone wants to join this band, your job is to, you know, download our track, record vocals over the top, send it back to us. So then we can get an idea of A, how they perform and B, how, how, how they write as well. Um, Jordan's submission obviously just uh, stood stood out above the rest at the time. Had some amazing submissions though. Um, Jordan stood out, and Lisa knew him a little bit more than me, so went off her word, and that's how he scored Jordan. Um, Mishka is Jordan's best friend from high school, so that was um. He, so yeah, just trusted Jordan in that. Tori, I've known as a, just a mutual musician, just from um going to gigs, and he had his own band, so we knew, um I knew of him. And Lachlan, we did not know. He was just a random gentleman that approached us when we were looking for a drummer, sent us a message and was like, oh, I've heard of you guys. I've known you guys for a while. And then that's, um, yeah, that's how we found Lachlan. That's awesome. Um, so <clears throat> the most important thing here is how do fans connect with your music? Where do we find the music that is currently out? Sure. And, and so, then also how do they connect with you so that they knew when that new album is coming out? Oh, sure. Absolutely. So most of our main news and updates will come from our Facebook page. Secondly, from our Instagram, but more, more so, um, more so from our Facebook. We're definitely more active on our Facebook. Um, where to find our music everywhere. So it should, should be available on all major streaming platforms. So that's including Spotify um, Apple Music, they're the only two I listen to. So I know, I know there's many more than that. So um, Amazon uh, Amazon Music, is that even a thing? <laughs> is I think a, yeah, so. Amazon? I feel yeah, like yeah. I occasionally buy stuff there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, similarly, we've got our own band camp store where people can buy our music if they wanted to own the, um, excuse me, the actual um, MP3 downloads. Um have our merch store at big cartel, but all these links, all of our links are on, um, on our Facebook and on our profile in our bio on Instagram. So, and our handle is pretty easy. If you just it's Instagram forward slash, ah, uh, sorry, you know, um, at calm area. So that's how you spell it. So I've got my <laughs> beanie on. So C A R M E R I A you can find us on Instagram and all our links are in our bio Facebook similar. It's just calm area followed by music. So facebook.com forward slash calm area music. Um, but all our info is there. So we have all our links. Fantastic. And I will yeah. post everything below this video as well as on metal-net.com 
So they'll be able to find yep. everything um, for there. And, and YouTube then, as well. I forgot to YouTube, mention YouTube. Yeah. Of course, our <laughs> videos are on YouTube as well. All right. And then I think I should have asked you this first, but I'm going to ask you this last. What does Carmaria okay. even mean? <laughs> I love this story. Okay. So <laughs> I remember I remember this I remember this day very specifically too. Um it was myself, Reese, and Anthony. So they were Reese was our first drummer, Anthony was our first bassist, and Anthony was my guest on last week's Red One Wednesday. Um we were at a music conference. We we're at a music conference and we had just formed the band and we needed a name. So we had songs in the works, but we just didn't have a name. We're sitting there. We've been thinking about the name for a whole week. And we come, we're, trying to, we're trying to be cool. We're like, oh, maybe we should have a Latin word. We should have a Latin phrase because that, you know, that sounds goth and that sounds metal, you know, because that's a cool thing to do. We're coming up with all these weird phrases and we were really liking the sound of like Dolorosa, which I right now I forget what that translates to in Latin. So then we had like Carmina Dolorosa, which we just loosely translates to songs of and... I'll have to go- uh, Google this afterwards, whatever Dolorosa stands for. So we had all these Latin phrases and then it was actually my drummer or Anthony it was one of them. I don't take credit for this, but we just started, I think it was my idea to start blending the words together. So then we started going, Oh, car or, you know what I mean? Started blending the words together. So then we got Carmeria from Carmina and Miseria which loosely translates to songs of misery in Latin. Oh. Yeah. So when you put Carmina and Miseria together, we were like Carmeria. And then I think we just wrote it down and we just saw it on a sheet of paper. We just looked at each other and we were like, that's it. So yeah, that's how, so it's a word that we made up. I love it. It belongs to yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a bit tragic because then people ask, so what is all, is all you write about just about like misery and sad songs? It's, no, not necessarily. Def- actually, definitely not. Not all, of our, not all of our songs are just sad songs. No, but, but yeah, I, I do think there's a certain vibe that will keep you company if you're in that mood and you don't not, and you don't want to stop being in that mood. <laughs> like, yeah. And truly, keep, if, keep in. truly if people listen to our music and that's what it does it for them, then I'm really happy as a songwriter and artist then. <laughs> so that's fantastic to hear. So when I come see you play, mm-hmm. um, what am I going to see on stage? What am All I going to see? And what I'm getting <laughs> to is what I, one of the things that super excited me about you guys is that you're like A to Z. You're not just a band that wrote some music and you get on there and play. Like there's like, the whole thing you do it from a to z so when i come see you what am i going to see in the live show uh goths on stage (laughs) (laughs) goths on stage playing heavy metal i love it (laughs) yeah so yeah we like to we like to we like to think of our style as um like a corporate goth so we try Mm -hmm. like to dress smart goth on stage definitely do the makeup nothing too heavy just 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 enough for the uh just enough for the vibe um yeah wish we had yeah. props maybe we'll have maybe we'll have some props when we uh, when we get props? to america what kind of props <laughs> <What> kind <laughs> i'm of props excited are? what these props might be <laughs> oh god i don't know full stage show full symphony everything <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah no i but what i really one of the things that really appealed to me was the fact that um you know when i watch your videos you definitely you know there's like the makeup there's the hair there's the wardrobe you've really built a world. And that was the thing that was most appealing to me about metal in the beginning, which I think there's still some aspect of it. And some people still play that game. And I mean that in a good respectful way, but I think it's missing from a lot of people and certainly from the stuff that came kind of afterwards where people just kind of show up. But, um, but I, but I love the full dedication to, to the, to, to the story you're selling with songs of misery come with, come with the whole look and everything. <laughs> I'm glad that means it's working. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So when you guys um, hope when we all start to get going to shows again, and when you guys start playing again, wh- where, where are you guys playing? Are you mostly in the Sydney area? Yeah. So our local town is Sydney. Uh, are you asking where would we play or where, yeah, where, 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 where are, are you we guys based? on booking shows once, once that's a thing again? Sure. Um, we do have shows booked. The only ones I can talk about 
uh, our we did have an East Coast tour. Um, oh goodness, that would have been April. That would have been April this year. So that's definitely been postponed. So that was like Sydney, uh, Mel- uh, Melbourne, Brisbane, and there were New Zealand shows. I think that yeah, I think there were some New Zealand shows a part of that. So that tour has definitely been postponed, and that's was with that was with our friends in Valhalla. So another amazing Australian metal band. Everyone needs to check them out if you, if you like your good um, Viking folk metal. So Valhalla is going to be a double tour with them. Um, I think that's all I can speak about that I'm allowed to speak about right now. Okay. Sounds good. So yeah. I'm going to post all of your information below and I definitely encourage people to go find you guys, find your videos, find your music, um, and then keep an eye out for when the new album comes out and if everything's touring. And then also I'll put everything on metalnet.com and that'll, it'll just live there so they can find you forever. Um, and I am, I'm so excited to meet you. I'm so excited to discover you and I look forward to seeing what you guys are going to be doing. Um, what you're doing now and what you're going to be doing come real life when real life resumes, whatever that is and whatever that Mm. is. Thank you so much.